In this video, I'm going to be talking about race with regards to black people. While race pertains to all of us, including people of color and white people, I'm focusing on black issues when it comes to race. And so, in this video, when I say race, I'll be referring to black people. This is because I don't want to keep on saying something like race, particularly with black people, over and over and over again. Now with that said, let's begin. Kat Black is a YouTuber who shares her experience in polyamory and her thoughts on trans topics or issues. Most of her videos are educational and give exposure to the polyamorous lifestyle, race, and what it's like being trans. She's interviewed a number of people and has also made beautifully animated videos on Black history. In addition to the variety of videos that Kat has made, she also has a weekly video called True Tea. True Tea is a time where Kat shares her stories, thoughts, and opinions and encourages an honest discussion in the comments. At the beginning of every True Tea video, Kat starts out with a warm cup of tea and encourages the viewer to grab their own cup of tea as well. I particularly like this because it feels down to earth and casual, which makes a great space for an honest discussion. But every now and then, instead of having a warm cup of tea, we start off the video with a glass of wine. These are always my favorite True Teas because it always feels like we're going to be particularly real today. So that's what we're doing today. Grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. Today I'm drinking box wine. All right, I don't drink alcohol very much. I don't know if you could tell by the look on my face. Anyways. Okay, so I watch a lot of BreadTube and I'm assuming that the people watching this video also watch a lot of BreadTube. If you're not sure what BreadTube is, also known as LeftTube, you might already watch some without realizing it. BreadTube is leftist YouTube content. BreadTube discusses politics, social issues, and analyzes media. It also uses an academic standard of research when research is used. I love watching BreadTube for these reasons. However, BreadTube isn't perfect. It has its issues. One of the issues I'd like to focus on is that despite race being an important leftist topic, I rarely see the discussion go deep enough. Usually, when I see educational videos on race, bread tube or not, they tend to fall into these three categories. The first group would be informational videos, like news clips that discuss hot topics in media, such as police brutality. These videos aren't necessarily leftist, but are still somewhat sympathetic to the issue of race and might denounce issues like police brutality. However, these videos often lack depth. They treat such issues as if these acts are caused by a few bad apples and don't discuss the systemic racism that has caused it. Furthermore, even though police brutality has been an issue for hundreds of years, and still is, these kinds of videos only discuss the topic when white people are also talking about it. Or in other words, black people have been talking about this issue for hundreds of years, but it's only a hot topic when white people recognize it too. If it's only black people talking about the issue, then it's not considered important enough to discuss in mainstream media. This is a problem for a number of reasons. The first would be that our issues are heard through a filter of white people. This is a problem because our voices are often misrepresented or not heard at all. And oftentimes, when our voices are heard, it's for the drama of the current event. In this clip, it's great that Philando Castile's parents are having a platform to vent their frustration, but part of this is just to sell more drama. Sure, his parents are saying that police are targeting black people, but no one is saying why police are targeting black people. And discussing the question of why is really, really, really important. Because exploring why this is happening is often genuinely confusing to a lot of white people, the people who can give black people the largest platform to speak. Many white people truly believe that the black people who have been killed by police officers deserve to die, or at the very least, sympathize with the fear that the police have of black people. And the assumption that their fear is justified isn't a problem with police brutality, it's the problem. This fear and prejudice is the systemic racism that allows police brutality to happen, and it's not getting talked about. With that said, it's clear why there is an anxiety to get white people to listen to black people when it comes to race. There's a power dynamic where white people are the ones with the most platform, and because of that, their opinion matters when it comes to race. They have the power to dismiss it or say that it's important enough for it to change. Without white people in the conversation, it's hard to fix anything without just creating your own society and secluding yourself. So unfortunately, there's an unnerving pressure for black people to explain race. And on news channels, it's not being discussed deeply enough or much at all. The next group of people that talk about race are leftist YouTubers. 
When these people do talk about race, it's usually thoughtful and well said. One of my favorite examples is the YouTuber Sean, who has debunked many racist myths and has exposed the alt-right. These videos are well-researched and share important information. However, while Sean has made a lot of these videos, there aren't a lot of videos of race on LeftTube compared to a number of other topics, such as capitalism, anarchism, communism, and gender. Also, though Sean does amazing research, his videos on race aren't from a person of color. This isn't necessarily bad. In fact, I think it's great that there are white people who care about race. However, there simply aren't a lot of black voices being heard even though there are a lot of black people who have a lot to say on the topic of race. And this might lead someone to think, well, you can't hear black leftists talking about race if there aren't any. Well, there actually are. There are black people making leftist, or at least left-leaning content. A couple of people that I personally watch are Julesy or For Harriet. They talk about feminism and race and have a lot of really good thoughts. Most of their audience is black women, and in a lot of ways, this is great. It's great because it's a space where black women can speak freely and the conversation about race is candid. Being able to be candid is important because a conversation about race often doesn't have the opportunity to be candid and gets shut down by defensiveness. For example, I made a video about the hashtag Blue Lives Matter and how it was created in opposition to hashtag Black Lives Matter. I didn't make this video for a black audience, but instead for a white audience that might not understand the issue with hashtag Blue Lives Matter. I felt like I had to be friendly and upbeat about police brutality. When it's something that is really upsetting for me, I have seen pictures and videos of kids being killed because they're black. I don't feel in the mood to be fun. However, I felt like I needed to present myself as disarming to white people because race is something that can be very upsetting for a lot of white people. And I mean a lot. I'm not gonna say, all white people, but I will say a heck of a lot of white people, a lot of them. It's hard for a lot of white people to talk about race without feeling defensive. After I made that video, I only got backlash. The comments were saying that I hated police officers, even though in my video, I went out of my way to say that I didn't. Even friends on my Facebook lashed out at me. I have had so many personal examples of talking about race with the sincere goal to fix issues about racism and then have a white person lash out at me. However, the reason why I'm not using those examples and am using the example of my video is because some people might think, maybe you were just really aggressive about race. And if that's the case, I can't blame them for lashing out at you. However, I'm using my hashtag Blue Lives Matter video as the example because you can watch it for yourself and see that it's clear that I'm talking about race in an overly friendly way to the point that I actually feel uncomfortable because this upbeat attitude seems inappropriate for such a heavy topic. And you can see that even though I was upbeat and friendly, I only experienced backlash and got hateful comments. And this backlash towards any discussion of race happens constantly on the internet and in person. It's so common that there are numerous books written about it. So this is an issue, not only because it's nerve wracking, but because it silences the discussion on race. This fear of backlash prevents us from discussing race and instead puts us in a position where we have to convince the other person that there's a problem in the first place. You think I'm being an angry black woman? Fine, I'll create a video that only discusses historical context to prove that my thoughts aren't only emotion driven. You don't think that racism exists? Fine, all I can do is ask you to listen to black people. Please just hear us out. It's a powerless position to be in. And this is why Julesy or For Harriet can be a breath of fresh air. Their audience is mostly black women, so they can talk about race and other topics without having to be defensive. When your audience is mostly black women and you're talking about race, the goal isn't to convince the audience that there's an issue. The goal is to discuss the issue. And this discussion allows for solutions, frustrations to be expressed, and most importantly, nuance. It's this kind of nuance and deep conversation about race that I find lacking on BreadTube and many leftist spaces. So BreadTube needs more nuance about race. But what content can we find that is made by Black YouTubers? This brings us back to Cat Black and other YouTubers like T1J and Angie Speaks. Now, I don't think that all these YouTubers explicitly make videos for BreadTube, but because much of their audience is white leftists, their videos are generally considered to be a part of BreadTube. As I mentioned earlier, Cat talks about many different issues, and one issue that she talks about is race. Her videos on race are often educational and provide historical context. Similarly, 
While Angie Speaks mostly criticizes capitalism, she has a video on race that is also educational and historical. While this work is great work, I do wonder if they mostly give historical context rather than personal opinions in order to prevent backlash. As I said earlier, I try providing historical context when I discuss race to prove that I'm not only having an emotional reaction, but that there is a historical issue. But in doing so, I have left my emotions and the emotions of others out of the picture. And these emotions and opinions are necessary in having layered discussions about race. However, this might not be what's happening. Kat and Angie Speaks might simply be choosing to come at things from a historical perspective. After all, bred to or not, it's clear that they're academics. Thus, researched work is important. So if they're leaving their emotions and personal opinions out of their videos to keep their work academic, then that's great. But if they're keeping their emotions and personal opinions out of their videos because of fear of backlash, as in a fear of people angrily misunderstanding them, then I'm worried that there might need to be a larger conversation about how we can talk about race on LeftTube. Let's take a look at the YouTuber T1J. Much of T1J's videos focus on explaining race. His aim is to solve the problem and be educational. He once posted a tweet saying, people coming together to work to improve life for X group is cool. People coming together to defeat or fight or destroy Y group is usually bad. I'd like to think you can have the first thing without the second thing, but it's not what people seem to be drawn to. I think that a lot of T1J's videos reflect this mentality. T1J is all about bringing light to issues not destroying the enemy. Thus, his videos are meant to be educational in order to bring people together. I really admire T1J's focus on education and sharing ideas, rather than destroying a group of people. However, in an attempt to be educational, his videos often only go as far to say that there is a problem, not necessarily to discuss the problem. The difference might seem subtle, but again, I think that it has its issues. For example, Let's take a look at For Harriet's video, Ariana Grande really wants to be mixed. In this video, Kim talks about why Ariana Grande, a white person, presenting herself as mixed or Latina is a problem. Kim talks about a number of things. There is a change in demographics in America, so it makes sense that white people are interested in non-white culture. Even so, it's frustrating when people don't give credit where credit is due. Whether you agree or disagree with these statements, my point is, is that Kim is talking about the nuances of cultural appropriation. She's not trying to convince you that cultural appropriation exists, because most of her audience doesn't need convincing. Instead, she's discussing it. Why is Ariana Grande trying to present herself as someone who's not white? Is it hurtful? Is it worth talking about? And so on. And again, you might disagree with Kim's points, but the important thing is that there's a layered discussion on the topic with emotions, thoughts, and solutions. Compare this to T1J's video, Cultural Appropriation Revisited. This video proposes the idea that cultural appropriation and cultural exchange exist. However, because the video takes the position that the audience might already dismiss the issue, T1J can only ask the audience to consider his thoughts. To show what I mean, let's compare the end of T1J's video with For Harriet's. In For Harriet's video, Kim ends by saying that black women deserve to be seen. It is incumbent upon us to like continue to call it out, to demand citation, to demand to be seen, because ultimately, you know, we think we live in this kumbaya world, but a lot of us are engaged in zero-sum fights for access to resources and opportunities. And that means some people are gonna be left out, that means some people are gonna be cast aside. And we know from history, overwhelmingly, that's going to be dark-skinned black women. Kim is able to summarize why the issue is important to her. Black women deserve to be seen for what they've done. And if someone is taking credit for that, Call it out. She goes on to say that not all instances of cultural appropriation are worth our time, and that a lot of this is an understandable trend. But again, whether you agree with Kim or not is beside the point. My point is that Kim is able to talk about the issue with nuance. She's able to say why this is important to her, to say how it's not all bad, and to ask if we should be talking about this or not. It feels human and personal, and yet a part of an issue that's bigger than all of us. But most importantly, there's a layered discussion that's happening. Now compare this to the end of T1J's video on cultural appropriation. My opinion is that all I can do is ask people to be thoughtful about how they engage with other cultures. You're allowed to like stuff, 
but you should also think about how your interactions with that stuff affects marginalized people. T1J doesn't discuss the nuances of cultural appropriation. Instead, he feels that all he can do is ask the viewer to be thoughtful. Cultural appropriation and exchange exist. Please hear me out. Asking people to listen and be thoughtful is good. But if this is all we can say about race, then the conversation about race hasn't gone deep enough. If race is an important issue to leftists, then there needs to be more discussion about racism. And this discussion needs to be more than, please consider that there's an issue with racism. The discussion needs to be about racism. I'm not saying this to criticize T1J. Even if his videos aren't layered discussions about race, they do present the idea in a disarming way to people who might have never thought about the issue. That's important. However, I do wonder if some of T1J's carefulness stems not only from wanting to be educational, but is also from a fear of backlash. As I've said, I've been in this position many times. You don't think racism exists? Well, please just hear me and other black people out. My opinion is that all I can do is ask people to be thoughtful about how they engage with other cultures. And this position feels disempowering because I don't want to just convince someone that racism exists. I want to talk about racism so we can fix the issue. But if the other person believes that there's not an issue at all, then we can never get to that discussion. And so, because much of T1J's work is to explain racial issues to a white audience that isn't necessarily convinced that they exist, and because much of his videos focus on asking people to listen rather than having a layered discussion on how to fix these issues, I do wonder if his videos are in part a position where he feels that he can't have layered discussions about race. If this is the case, I don't think that we as black people should have to do this. I used to make videos that explained racial issues to a skeptical white audience. And because I knew that they were skeptical, I tried to be disarming. And in being disarming, I had to water down the message. I had to remove my feelings and I had to remove a lot of my thoughts in order to make myself and this issue more digestible. The problem is, is that racism isn't digestible. While some people think it's unbearable to talk about race even for a few minutes, try experiencing it throughout your life. I can tell you, as an experienced person, it doesn't get more digestible, it gets worse. There is no way to present racism in a disarming package without watering down the message of racism. And so, we need to talk about race, whether it's digestible or not. Now, T1J is just one person, and it shouldn't be up to him to perfectly explain race. And again, I think that his videos are really great. They bring up important issues with the goal of fixing these issues. And so though I want to see more in-depth conversations about race, I'm not saying that this is all up to T1J, or even Kat, or Angie Speaks. So why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because when black people talk about race, we tend to have two dichotomies. There are black people who make content for black people, and there's a layered discussion about race that takes place. Then there are black people who make content for white people, and these videos are often educational, yet lack the layered discussion about race. And even more so, there can be a pressure to put racial issues into neat and digestible packages, that isn't realistic to the gravity of racial issues. However, I don't think that this has to be the only way. I don't think that the most nuanced discussions have to take place among only black people. And I don't think that the only white audience is one of skeptics where black people are put in a position to speak very carefully. I think that there is another option and that's making videos for people who care. So though I think that the conversation of race is lacking on the left, white people or not, Leftists care about race. And so while I think it's okay to make educational or historical videos on race, I think that we should also be able to talk about race in a way that makes us vulnerable. When it comes to race, I think that the ideal vision of Left Tube would be for black people and also other people of color to be able to express themselves, to be able to talk about race, and then to be met with support and solutions to the issues brought up. For example, I'm often on LeftTube to learn. I want to learn about other economic ideas that are better than capitalism. Even though I'm not trans, I want to hear what trans people have to say and try to figure out the best way to support these communities and individuals. And I think that on BreadTube, I think that the discussion of race can be something similar. I think that we can make a space where black people and other non-white people can talk about race and be heard. 
And in this space, people can also ask questions as well if they want to learn more. And we can have these layered discussions that move the issue of race forward. And so from now on, when I talk about race, I'm going to try to create these spaces. So if you're one of the people watching from my old hashtag Blue Lives Matter video and you feel angry and defensive, go away. This video isn't for you because we have a lot to talk about and I quite frankly don't have the time or energy to convince you of anything. So cheers to that. Which brings us to part two. In my next video, I'm going to be using one of Cat Black's video to discuss racial tolerance and the appearance of being supportive. Sounds like a blast. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much to my patrons, Nine Black, Nikki Straza, and William Miles. It means so much that people watch my videos, let alone donate to them. So thank you so much. If you'd like to become a patron, the link is in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts on the video. What about race can be improved on the left? What about race do you like on the left? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.